Everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Basarat. Hello. Hi. Very nice. Thank you for having me here. It's great to have you. For folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So I'm Basarat. I am an MVP for TypeScript. I've been an MVP for TypeScript for eight years. I've been a part of the TypeScript journey since the beginning, so 2012. Um, I do a lot of contributions, for example, on Stack Overflow, on YouTube. I have my own business as well, Boolean Art, where I build my own courses. I go to a lot of conferences, just general community outreach work. It's great. One of the few people I would always harass a lot of MVPs, like you've got all of the social buttons filled out, like all the, the links. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, have to, I don't have to go digging to find all of your profile details to add to the blog post. It's like it's all right there. So yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, so it, it, thank you for doing that in advance. <laughs> I, I'm a bit fortunate because of my unique name. It's my name on all of the platforms. So it's LinkedIn slash in slash Basrath, Twitter slash Basrath, and like everything, even YouTube yep. slash at Basrath. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. You know, it, early on, what's so why I joined a lot of the platforms. I, I'm sure that there were there was a shorter version available out there. I created mm -hmm. uh, my is, my handle is Buckley Planet, which is just like longer. I wish it were shorter, but I I actually did it as a joke. I was kind of poking fun at my brother-in-law, um, who had a, a website called Fisher Planet, and just as a joke. And he's an artist and very talented. Mm -hmm. And I created a initially a fake site called Buckley Planet, where it had like crayon line art, you know, horrible artwork on there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyway. So talk about your path to becoming the MVP. I know it was eight years ago, it was a while back, but what was that experience like? What was your path to becoming an MVP? Um, I think the, the final thing that kicked it over was someone nominating me. But before that, I had done a lot of things. So uh, I was active on the GitHub forms. Actually, even before that, the TypeScript name used to be on CodePlex, when that used to be a thing. So I was active yeah. over there. Yeah. I actually created the issue on CodePlex that actually asked for TypeScript to be moved over to GitHub. That's one of the highlights of my career. Um, in terms of doing things for TypeScript, a lot of issues, I actually read the language specification because there was no, per se, online documentation. You had you got this PDF file or something that you had to read through, and that's that was, hey, this is how TypeScript works kind of thing. And I converted that into a website that eventually became like the TypeScript Deep Dive, which is a very popular yeah. book for TypeScript has like 10k or 20k stars on github um then hey, on stack I have, to point out, I have to point out for people that are newer into the microsoft ecosystem microsoft has been doing over the last four or five years an excellent job at the documentation and of course a lot that this community created but they've really mm -hmm. been doing a fantastic job for a long time they were horrible at it I, you know, I, came, I was initially a SharePoint MVP, and a lot of the SharePoint community was built up and became a strong community because there was no documentation or it was crappy documentation, and we had to yeah. go and create those things. So I'm just glad yeah. to see that in other categories as well, the same problem. 100%. And actually, uh, I, I'd like to give a shout out to this person called Otta. Uh, he joined the TypeScript team and he really uplifted the TypeScript website. Uh, he wrote the handbook version two as well. There was a lot of portions of TypeScript that were actually never documented on the TypeScript website. So he jumped in and did that as well. The internals of TypeScript were not as documented from within the TypeScript team. So the, the people that were working on TypeScript knew how it worked and they were happy to share that knowledge on GitHub forms and stuff. So I collected that and put that into TypeScript deep dive, but on TypeScriptLang.org, there was nothing about that. So Otta jumped in and did a lot of work there as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so did a lot of documentation work. And then at that time, the best way to use TypeScript was to actually use Visual Studio. And for people that were on other things, for example, the brackets IDE or Atom was the new hotness at that time. They didn't have a great experience. So I actually built the TypeScript extension for Atom uh, and that got uh, 1 million downloads. So that that was very popular. Wow. Um, wow. Actually yeah. got showcased by Anders at the Build conference as well. Uh, but then VS Code came along and that sort of <laughs> was an improvement over, over Atom and 
most um, the developers actually moved over. The developers that were using Atom moved over to VS Code. That sort of killed off Atom. Uh, so I decided to create my own IDE just so that while this dust settles on which of the IDEs are going to be the best, um, I built my own IDE specifically designed for TypeScript called ALM Tools. Uh, that's actually no longer in use because, of course, VS Code is so great and everybody uses it. So popular, especially within the front-end community, which is the main focus for TypeScript developers, uh, that I sort of killed that off. But yeah, I did a lot of dev work a lot of support work. Uh, and then more recently, I started my own YouTube channel as well. Actually, before that, I did videos on Egghead. I did videos on Udemy as well. Um, so in short, did a lot of things. And that sort of got me into the MVP program combined with someone else's nomination. Uh, and then since then, nowadays, maintaining it is actually quite easy because I just do what I love, talk about TypeScript. Uh, I don't have to worry about any. Um, it's weird. I I don't, I'd, I never aimed for a Microsoft specific thing. It was more along the lines of this is great tech that web developers should use. And fortunately, Microsoft recognized that and appreciates that and gave me an MVP ness as well. Yeah. Well, that's, we talk about that a lot. I mean, it's a common thing with MVPs. Like, like I would do the things I'm doing regardless of the MVP. I, this is stuff that I'm passionate about. I mean, I, I got into collaboration technology in the late 90s. Like, mm -hmm. so before joining the Microsoft ecosystem in 2005, like I had been doing this stuff for a while. Uh, and, I, and I would say that if for some reason, I know with the annual renewal, um, there's a lot of MVPs that like sweat it out. And I, I know a handful of people that just lost their MVPs. They're just not contributing as much as they used to. Changes in job, changes in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, other, other things. Like I would certainly be sad to no longer be part of the program, but I would still do this series. I would still do most of the content, the things that I'm doing. So I, it wouldn't change so much in the in the day to day. I just wouldn't have the level of access and access to the the great MVP community. What what's the uh, how's the what's the state of like the community now uh, around like developer technologies um, down in your part of the world? TypeScript is is uh, popping off. So I think the thing that really kicked off into this new exponential growth cycle of TypeScript is Angular moving to TypeScript and recognizing it as the first thing, which meant that TypeScript could be used uh, officially within Google as well. So there's large part of the Google code base that uses it. There are companies that follow the Google stack. Canva is an example. I worked at Canva as well, and their primary language is TypeScript. Uh, down in here, down here in Australia, there are a lot of big companies. Atlassian is another one of them. You might have heard of, but another one is Seek. Uh, not particularly big outside of Australia, but quite big in Australia. Um, their stack is 100% TypeScript. So a lot of enterprise interest is there. And all of my jobs have been with TypeScript as well, by the way. So I've worked at Pepperstone yeah. as well, which is a mobile trading platform. I built their, my team built their mobile app. Uh, that's React Native and TypeScript. Um, and then, React Native by default when you create a new project, so that's a Facebook thing. That's that creates a template with uh, TypeScript. Uh, Next.js use, uses TypeScript, which is like the most popular way of using React nowadays. So React is by Facebook, but in order to use modern React, you need server components, and the only thing that currently supports it officially is Next.js, which is a Vercel thing, and that, like as I mentioned, uses TypeScript as well. So a lot of web dev by default is using TypeScript. So we have the, the enterprises, we have the open source, and then there, there's the community. And there, there's quite a big following on Twitter around the TypeScript ecosystem. Uh, the new YouTubers that are out there that are highly socially engaged, for example, Primogen or Theo, uh, they're also strong advocates of TypeScript. I have my own, of course, YouTube channel as well, 150K subscribers. It is my name, Basarath. Uh, that's a lot of YouTube, a lot of uh, TypeScript content on YouTube as well. So, yeah, yeah all, all all grounds covered. <laughs> no, that's that's great. It's uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's funny too. You're talking about going and and uh, um, especially if you're if if somebody is focusing on an area where there isn't a lot of documentation. I know that there's it's gotten better, it's more improved. You've mm -hmm. got you know an MVP focusing on that area now, but. I'm going and aggregating content, finding the good content, aggregating that, and then helping people find that great content. That's another great 
community contribution. That's another way to to give back to the community. Um, in fact, one of the things I, I know it's hard for people to understand when you you just when you're rattling off like your process and said, oh, and I and and somebody submitted your your name to it. Like that is a key part. How do I get somebody to submit my name to the process? Like. I, and I'm sure eight years, you've been asked this question a lot. Like, what do I need to do to become an MVP? So when people talk about like that, so what recommendation do you have of how do you get you know, seen by somebody at Microsoft or by an, a fellow MVP? Um, how do you get somebody to submit on your behalf? So it's so interesting. So I've, I've recommended, of course, a few people over the years as well. Uh, what I find is that uh, the things that are required to maintain it, like for me, as an example, I just need to maintain my YouTube channel, which is focused on web development content. And that sort of has allowed me to, for the past three years, that has been the main contributing factor for making sure that I get into the MVP program. But originally coming in, there needs to be, uh, I feel like a diverse areas of impact. Um, so book content, conferences, and videos, and code contributions, like th those are all the areas that I did, but you don't need all of them, but I think just one sort of doesn't suffice. So as an example, there's a developer I know who maintains a very popular package within TypeScript, uh, and I think that they definitely deserve MVP because they do talk about TypeScript on their blog as well, but the main contribution is, of course, that one open source project, right? And it's a, it's a lot of effort maintaining an open source project, anybody who knows that, and this is the project with... Uh, thousands of stars, so like 20K plus. Uh, however, they didn't get the, into the MVP program. So getting in can be a bit hard, but people will nominate you. I, I can give you actually a successful story. Josh Goldberg is a successful story. Um, he got MVP for TypeScript as well, actually. He's authored a book on TypeScript, and then he's, but, but the thing that kicked him over the line was actually his contribution to the ESLint uh, program. So he maintains a number of plugins for TypeScript ESLint. So if you want to use ESLint for TypeScript, he, he builds those kind of things. But then he does conference talks as well. And then he has this book on TypeScript as well. And then he's quite active on Twitter as well. Uh, so I think the this, this summary I, I, I would say is that do the things that you're passionate about. Don't focus on um, getting into the program and try to be a bit diverse. So yeah, just doing one thing and focusing on one thing can sort of get you in, but it can be a bit of a difficult journey. Whereas if you've done at least two kind of things, it's like, okay, this person is focused on this technology across areas. It's funny because I know a handful of uh, some brand new MVPs, uh, met a woman at uh, the MVP summit this year who uh, I said, oh, like what conferences? She's like, oh, I've, I'm getting ready to speak at my first conference. I was like, oh, are you speaking at user groups? She's like, no, I've never presented before. I said, are you bro blog a lot, write a lot? And she's like, no, actually I was thinking I should probably start a blog. I'm like, I was like, oh, you have a YouTube channel video? She's like, nope, I've never done one. I'm like, okay, I'm running out of contribution type <laughs> forums. She's heavy duty in the forums and this, the diversity thing, um, she also write, writes scripts, writes, creates tools. So over in GitHub, there's a lot of stuff. So those are her two contributions. Never gotten up in front of an audience, was deathly afraid of that process. And, but is one of those people that was just doing things behind the scenes. And it was, you know, got the attention of a number of Microsoft people that are like, wow, you have done so much, you know, here and answering questions, uh, you know, day in, day out. And that's what she was passionate about. So you can do something without being up on stage or out in front of people. I know that's, that's hard for a lot of people, but it's, uh, yeah. It, but I, I agree, having uh, some different types of contributions, but focused contributions. Like you need to pick a product. You need to be mm -hmm. focused in one area. Because otherwise, if you're too much of a generalist, if you're creating content around too many topics, too many different areas, you know, then, then the product teams are just like, I, I don't know what this person is, you know, an expert in. Like, they're all over 100%. the place. That's always hard. But it's, uh, yeah, it, uh, the, uh, and then as far as, you know, down in the region, I was also at wondering, like, how is, like, the local community? Are user groups kind of coming back to life down in Australia? Are you active yep. in any of those participating? Yep. So meetups.com is like where the user groups are mostly organized right down here. Yep. Um, there's a React meetup. 
that I go to pretty much every single time and present at that as well. There's Melbourne JS, there's Melbourne CSS as well. Um, it's interesting. I've been here for around 12 years at this point, and I jumped into the developer scene quite early. One thing, so I immigrated here from Pakistan, and one thing that struck me quite quickly was that people are going to host a place where you can come and talk about technology, and they're going to feed you for free as well. I'm talking about student salary, like like no salary student uh, yeah. status. Um, and so I, I got into that meetup quite quite quickly and did a lot of uh, made a lot of community connections uh, always put my hand up to speak as well so that sort of has made me a bit of a dinosaur in this particular city in terms of mm -hmm. dev stuff um, so the reason why I brought that up was because I mentioned MELV CSS MELV CSS is something that the last meetup was around uh, eight years ago and that that's just hosting its next one um, actually yesterday night it hosted it so yeah, lots of meetups, free food at all of those meetups. Yeah. Um, no, it, come and talk, it, it, talk to people. You know, I don't understand why there aren't more students at a lot of those events. Like, it, even when mm -hmm. we've done regional things here, we do a hard court, like a full court press into the local universities to try and put up posters and flyers and talk to teachers and talk to administrators saying, please get the word out. Like, this is free training on these different technologies. Here's our schedule. Here's our speakers. I mean, even doing something, I'm based in Salt Lake City, uh, Utah, and we had some international speakers fly in, you know, um, so, and then people, of course, all over. And it's all free for folks. Most of those events are free. Uh, and so you can find, um, you know, the formerly SharePoint Saturdays, now Community Days and SQL Saturdays and, and different Azure events and now AI-related events. And there's just tons of stuff that's out there. And we also, like Meetup is, probably the number one platform to go and find the stuff on and the vast majority of those are all free mm -hmm. like why would you not go take advantage of that like get, get out of the classroom and go talk to practitioners of this technology and learn their real world experiences i mean that that's we need more of that we need more community involvement not less a hundred percent and i'm i love students as well so as an example with boolean art i host workshops so it's 300 dollars per developer for the different trainings i provide javascript TypeScript, react etc uh, but for student uh, group i said that i can do it for a thousand for for an entire group instead of per, per individual and they were like that sort of number and i'm like you name a number it doesn't matter if you, even if it's free students are the future i'm happy to do a workshop for you guys yeah that's very cool well, it's, it's, uh, I mean, we're always, we do the, like the same thing, even though it, for paid events, there's usually a deep discount or even free tickets for students. Got to be able to prove it folks that you're an actual student there. But I mean, there's tons of resources out there for people that want to learn the technology. We need, we need to have constant, you know, new faces in the crowd. We need to mm -hmm. have new people to replace. There's so much opportunity. And especially in the like the consulting world, like you could never find enough people for the projects that you have to turn away business because you don't have the personnel to be able to staff them. So there's uh, tons of opportunity. That's for sure. Hundred percent. Well, very, very thanks so so much for joining us. It's it's great to to meet you. I would, uh, hope to have uh, gotten down back to your uh, your your part of the world this year. It didn't work out, but uh, with the rest of my travel schedule up here going the mm -hmm. opposite direction. I'm headed to Europe again, but uh, yeah. for folks that want to find out more about you or to connect with you, where where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Most active on YouTube, so YouTube slash at Basarat. Also active on Twitter, so X slash Basarat. And you can also find me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn slash in slash Basarat. And of course, I'll have all the links that are out in the blog post and out on the YouTube video and stuff. So really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it.